Hi, Eva Nichols here. Today I'm going to show you how I paint the half dome in Yosemite, inspired by this photo, but it's not going to look anything like the photo. Here's my sketch. And I went ahead and wet the sky and I got my puddles of color out and I'm starting out with the yellow, which is nickel azo yellow or transparent yellow. And it's warmed up with a little bit of quinacridone coral which I'm putting around that orange slash yellow uh, to guard it against mixing uh, later on with uh, the purples and the blues. And here we have the quinacridone magenta that goes around. And then um, I'm adding on some of the indantrin blue. And I'm just uh, building up the sky. I want to have a glow on the left side and then it'll be gradually bluer and darker on the right side. That's that's my intention. And I want to catch that last brilliant light before everything kind of goes into le bleu, which is the blue hour. And so I want to catch that brilliant, brilliant light right before the sun is down and everything fades. That's what I want to catch with this uh, painting. And I just wanted to have a little bit of a drawing on so that I get the shapes of the half, half dome correct. But the rest is more or less my imagination. And as you can see already, this has nothing to do with the colors on the photo. And I also changed the angles of the drawing a little bit. But uh, I wanted to make sure that people could see that it's the half dome that I'm painting here. And now I'm just tipping the paper back and forth to let the colors mix and mingle and getting some more of the uh, quinacridone magenta to uh, purple up that right side and uh, get some more pigment in so that the, it'll run. <music> You can see right there I'm using a tissue to just pick up a little extra pigment that ran where it's not supposed to go. And I'm just keeping intensifying the colors. And you can do that as long as it's really wet. And you can see uh, it is really wet. And I'm using a tissue there to pick up extra water and pigment because I don't want to risk that I get a drop of dirty pigment where all the colors have mixed so so that everything uh, goes uh, neutral and muddy. I want to keep the colors clean, but I want the edges soft. So that's what I'm striving for here. So I had to wait, of course, for the sky to dry. And now I can see how the sky dried and uh, I'm quite happy with it. It's, uh, as you can see, like always in watercolor, it's quite a bit lighter than what it looked like when we had the wet paint on. Now I'm starting to uh, paint the half dome, the back side of the half dome, the top and the half uh, of the half dome. And I start out with yellow, put a little bit of the quinacridone coral in. And then I want to um, neutralize the color a little bit as I go dark on the down on the down, uh, down on the back side of the top of the half dome. Sorry about my head. It's I'm standing up painting because you know this is a half sheet of watercolor paper, so the dimensions are 15 high and 22 inches wide, and so that is um, you know a bigger painting. And that really requires me to stand up, I feel, get better movement of my arms and stuff. So you can see I'm using a little bit of the cobalt blue here to neutralize that orange on the back side here. And I'm darkening a little bit in the corners here. Just want to give it some shape and glow on the top front part. <music> So I'm uh, still using my dagger brushes. This is the half inch. The one I used earlier was a uh, 5 8 I think it's called. 
um, and now I'm just putting some water on here and there, almost like I'm dry brushing with water. But um, and now I get some pigment on, and with vertical strokes uh, that are kind of hit and miss, I put some of the uh, transparent yellow on, and then I'm going to warm it up now with some of the quinacridone coral, and uh, I'm putting a little bit of burnt shenna in here. So that's the color that I added to the palette, burnt shenna. And now I'm going over to the magenta. And you can see I'm being careful that I still retain some of the highlights. And that's exactly why I put water on a few places so that I get the blending but then my brush also hits the uh, dry paper and that gives me a little bit of that dry brush effect. And this is how I'm going to paint uh, those uh, front highlight lighted areas of the rocks. And now I'm going to the darker tones while it's still damp so I get some of that blending and still because I, st I still have some dry spots, uh, I still get a little bit of dry brushing. And before everything dries on me, I grab my credit card and I scrape into the paint while it's still damp. And you can see I get some marks, uh, mainly some highlights, and uh, that's going to help me create that rocky, rugged texture. And then um, I continue down the valley, so to speak, uh, with the similar uh, colors, and um, I'm going to put the, them on, as you can see, more or less just on uh, dry paper, and then I wet it with the yellow, and now I'm putting some of that quinacridone coral in, and I'm going to also use the credit card here, and I'm going to darken some areas. <laughs> And again, I grab my credit card before uh, the colors dry on me and I start scraping in some uh, vertical shapes and also some horizontal because there are little ledges uh, on the mountains. And here I grabbed my uh, number eight round brush and I want to go in and just uh, find all those uh, areas where I want to indicate that uh, the highlight is catching some of those ledges. Uh, so that I have kind of like a road map and I don't get lost in my own painting here. That can certainly happen when you're painting like this. And then I'm back to that uh, deep valley there that is highlighted. And I'm just uh, jumping around a little bit and trying to figure out what my painting needs. This is a very intuitive and kind of scary part of the painting, to be honest with you. Uh, so I'm kind of tiptoeing around here and trying to get my bearings. And uh, I decided to uh, go in um, and paint that uh, distant little um, mountain that we can see peeking up behind the half dome. And it's covered with some evergreen. So I'm using my indantrin blue with a little bit of yellow in, but I'm keeping it very blue to uh, make sure that it uh, looks distant. And um, I'm using my half-inch dagger brush because uh, that's a fabulous brush for painting those uh, little uh, tips of the evergreens and um, just uh, cleaning up my shapes as I look at it and paint. Next, I grab my credit card and I scrape in some rocks there in the distance. So I have mixed myself uh, some of the quinacridone uh, coral with a little bit of yellow in it and um, put a little bit of the magenta in and the colors a little dirtied up now, which is fine because uh, I wanted uh, to paint this a little bit darker area but still keep it very warm. And um, I'm just uh, looking a little bit at the photograph that I have and at my sketch to kind of make sure that I uh, maintain some of the shapes that I want to maintain to uh, make sure that it still has the character of the half dome. And uh, I'm using a lot of uh, 
artistic license here with my colors. So um, I still want the shapes to, uh, to read correctly. And I go in and I put some of that color also on the front face of the half dome. <laughs> The next step after the color there is getting some of those markings scraped in with my credit card before the paint dries. And uh, I love using the credit card for rocks and hard surfaces. And then back to the brush. And here you can see this little dry brushing. And I'm going into my indantron blue now because now we're really moving over to the darker, cooler side of the mountain. And I'm getting a little bit of that color in while it's still damp on the on the area I painted earlier that if I can hit it just right when it's still damp you know it'll uh, it'll mix a little bit and I'll get uh, some blending going on and you can see I'm leaving uh, a little bit of a highlight on the top there of course there's uh, some light being caught up there and now I'm just putting in some little reinforcement of the darks and uh, beginning to uh, tie the, the half dome together with that back part of the mountain. And again, with that uh, blue-purple that I have mixed with the indantron blue and some of the uh, quinacridone magenta, I'm uh, going in and I am darkening some of the crevices uh, on the front face of the half dome. And... Uh, now the paint is dry there, so I can get a little bit of uh, some hard edges, and then I go in and soften uh, some of the edges also. You can see I am just jumping back and forth here and uh, creating that next part of the back mountain. And again, out with the credit card and get some of those uh, uh, rock faces scraped out. I find that's uh, really effective. And then I go back in with my dagger brush with some of the dark paint on while the paint on the painting is still damp so that I can get some darker areas but still with some soft edges. So well, now I'm tackling the left side of the painting and that's gonna be where the mountain is the darkest. And I'm using my um, two inch wash brush and my dagger brush. And my dagger brush is loaded with some quinacridone coral and I'm just dabbing it around here and there and that is just to give me some of the uh, highlights, warm highlights for when I'm scraping out my um, rock shapes and I'm sorry about my head being a little bit in the way here. It's very difficult to film when I'm standing up and I'm so intent in the in the painting process so I as you can see here I'm using a very dark color it's the indantron blue with some uh, of the burnt sienna and some of the quinacridone magenta and uh, a little bit of yellow. And so it's just almost a black, but I make sure that it's varied. So you can see some areas look a little purple. And uh, I'm going over the reds that, that I put down first. And uh, I had put water on, but not everywhere. So it's the same system of having some wet areas and some dry areas. I find that is a really, really effective way of getting a lot of texture and get both soft and hard edges and a little bit of dry brushing. And um, you can see I'm continuing and all of a sudden here I have a big area that is being covered with a mixture of dark paints and I have those uh, quinacridone coral areas underneath in some areas and I'm also using uh, some more of the cobalt blue and of the um, burnt sienna and I'm just jumping around in the puddles I have on my palette and everything mixes and mingles and that's what I want. I want to start out with just soft transitions of colors. A little bit of green, a little bit of blue, a little bit of uh, purple and some uh, of the uh, warmer colors. And now here we go with the credit card, scraping out and uh, looking at the, the drawing that I have uh, to uh, just kind of get the direction of my scrapes. That's really the main point here. And uh, 
It's a very, very quick way of painting and it's exciting and a little bit scary because, you know, this is uh, the area where you can really mess it up. Um, but I'm going for the gusto and here I'm going a little bit more uh, horizontal to uh, get some of the surfaces of those mountains, uh, uh, the, the tops of some of the, you know, mountains that are in front. So I've had to uh, reinforce my dark puddles and now with my dagger brush I am painting in some uh, evergreen shapes with a mixture again of the uh, indantron blue mixed with uh, bird chenna and uh, some yellow and I'm just jumping around in the puddles because I want to have color variation but I want them dark and I want them uh, on the blue green side and then a few little lights put in here and there and uh, I'm just uh, building up these uh, foreground tree shapes in this uh, section of the painting. Now it's time to grab my credit card again and I'm scraping in a few little um, vertical lines that's going to indicate some tree trunks that are maybe catching a little bit of that last light just to uh, make it fit with the rest of the painting. So the next step is to uh, darken a little bit up there on the top uh, of the left side of my painting to indicate a uh, little bit more clearly that there is a, a mountain behind those rocks that I scraped out in the foreground and the trees. It's just all part of creating depth in the painting. And I, while I have the dark out, I'm going in to reinforce some of those highlights that I scraped out with the credit card uh, to give more dimension to these uh, rocks in the foreground. And I'm using a little number four brush to loosen the edge so that it's not just a stripe. And then I'm using my credit card again to scrape out a little bit more on the top there of the left side of the painting. moving over to the right side of the painting and just reinforcing those uh, distant mountains there behind the half dome and uh, strengthening the color a little bit and just putting a little bit more detail in there with uh, some dark blue-green color, a little bit of purple and uh, just uh, fine-tuning that area to make it balance with what I did on the left side. And that's how you have to do a painting is, you know, don't start, and it's not like you start from one end and then you just move um, from there. I think, especially in paintings like this, it's a good idea to jump from, from area to area to make it all um, go together and back out with the credit card and scraping out a little bit more uh, highlights in that area. And you can see that matches what I have going on on the left side. 
So uh, there's unity in this painting. And now I am going to tackle this last unpainted area. And I started out with spraying some water on with my dot bottle or my spray bottle. And that's just to get a little bit of water on, especially the bottom part, because that's also going to be with some trees. But first I put in some of that quinacridone coral in that uh, area where I'm going to have some more of the rocks and the cliffs. And uh, I want to have something uh, that is warm underneath. And now on this back side, I am using some of my uh, cobalt blue and my burnt sienna. And now I'm putting in some of that vivid uh, quinacridone magenta. And I'm just jumping around and doing some vertical strokes. And you can see there's some more of the burnt sienna and some of the blue and just everything because there's some dry areas and some wet areas. Um, so I get some dry brushing and a lot of soft areas as well. And I'm doing mainly vertical strokes. And I'm making sure that I remember um, that I have those little uh, ledges that are catching the light. That's where I put that yellow one earlier. And that help, helps me uh, remember to leave those areas light. And I'm just uh, very intuitively here, just going in with my uh, 5 8 inch dagger brush and my uh, different colors. And just here you can see really, really dark. This is again a stage of the painting where I'm really going with my intuition and I'm just reacting to what I see happening on the, on the paper. So now it's time to get my credit card out again and I'm scraping out some of those ledges and some rock shapes while the paint is still damp. That's very important. The timing is everything when you want to use a credit card. Uh, your paint can't, I mean, shouldn't be completely dripping wet, but it should still be damp so you can move the pigment. And that's what I'm doing here. And again, it's a very intuitive part of the painting. I'm just, you know, jumping around and scraping out where, you know, I, I think it needs it. It's, it's hard to explain this stage, but it's just reacting to what I see and to what's happening on the paper. And I just go with it. And you can see as I scrape, I scrape out some highlights and now I'm spraying in with my dot bottle. Can you see those dots there? That's a bottle that will give you some bigger uh, droplets, not a little mister spray. And now I'm going in with my 5 8 inch dagger brush and real dark colors and uh, I'm stroking from the bottom up because these eventually are going to turn into uh, shapes of evergreens just like on the left side. And I'm just going in with a tissue and just dabbing up, uh, you know, when I, when I do those uh, strokes sometimes, you know, I have uh, little droplets that are going onto the painting and I don't want that. And now I'm going in and I'm trying to uh, make these shapes into evergreens with my half inch dagger brush and some dark paints, mainly the uh, indanterin blue and a little bit of yellow and a little bit of burnt sienna. And I'm just uh, building my forest here, so to speak, similar to the one I have on the left.
before uh, the paint dries on me, I'm going in with my uh, 5 8 uh, dagger brush and I'm, you can see I'm lifting up some vertical trunk shapes with a thirsty brush. Thirsty brush means that you know I've taken all the um, moisture out of it. And then I'm going in and I'm uh, painting over some of those uh, lifted out areas just to, to break them up like evergreens. That's the whole idea is to make this look like um, a group of evergreens in the foreground and in the shadow. And now I'm going back in again with my number four round brush to uh, fine tune those tree shapes. Here I loaded up my dagger brush again with uh, some dark paint and uh, I'm just uh, in the fine tuning stages here so I'm just putting in some of those last deep shadows behind some of these uh, rocks and uh, I'm using my number eight brush to uh, uh, also uh, put some of the shapes in. I'm just a two brush approach and uh, I'm loosening the edges and I'm just putting in the last little details and I'm you know being careful here that I don't overdo it because I really um, like what I have. I have stepped back several times and looked at it and I actually let it sit overnight before I uh, did this part of the painting because it really is important that you step back from your paintings and evaluate before you uh, uh, go in and do these final little details and uh, stop before you've overdone it. And here's the final result. This is a photo I took of it after I had completed it. Mm -hmm. 